Good morning and welcome to Tuesday the 21st of July 2020. Apologies for yesterday, I needed some downtime to nurture an injury and so I didn't get around to a recording. But today I thought I would bring your attention to these poppies. Um, last week in my weekly update for a network facilitator, so I talked about a story where the network, uh, where the um, from Tasmania, where one of the elders had a, a, a 300 acre farm and he grew poppies, and, and we're fortunate enough to to just have a, a little remembrance of those. There they are, they're amazing things, and that's about the the level. I'm uh, probably a little bit drier now because they've been out of the ground, but that's what they would cut off to take to. The, the processing. Now, anybody that would think they might come around home and make a cup of po uh, poppy tea, let me warn you, these are poisonous. They are toxic. Um, they, when they make these poppies, they, they make them with a particular chemical makeup that until they pass through a process, they are not safe. They, are, they will kill you. We, we do know of people backpack backpackers in Tasmania who saw the poppies and thought, ah, a cheap cup of tea. Well, unfortunately, it was a very sad end for them. But for me, I, I think of these poppies, and I remember the statement of Karl Marx, where he said that, um, that hope is the opium of the masses. And, and I think that's quite a hopeless statement, really, uh, as if Hope is just something that is fabricated for the sake of, of communal control. And um, I think that the hope that Jesus invites us into is a living hope. It's a hope that sees the end of death. It's a hope that heralds life beyond uh, in this world and the next. And if we understand the nature of the story and and the, the true hope that Jesus is on about, it is not a religious hope. It's not something that man whips up to kid himself that then everything is okay. It's actually a living hope that resides deeply within our hearts. And of that hope, and, and it's, it's interesting to see how Jesus in, in making that hope known moved his way through communities and communities and the people who had been experiencing hopelessness at the hands of their religious leaders, well, they turned out en masse because of the very real living hope that Jesus was bringing to people. Let me read this story. Then Jesus made a circuit. This comes out of Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 and following. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported kingdom news, and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, my parenthesis, because they were trapped in religion. But so confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest. He said to his disciples, how few workers on your knees and pray for harvest hands. You know, I think the, the old version said the fields are white for the harvest and the crowds were the Samaritans, the people that were considered of no value and they were, wore white tunics. And it's quite interesting. Uh, and as we, as we look at the church in this day uh, trying to adjust to the COVID-19 challenge to find our feet again. And the further I move into the community and talk to people, more and more people are asking deep and searching questions about the meaning of life, about the place where they can find real hope because they're finding their hope couldn't be in their superation package, their hope couldn't be in their employment, their hope couldn't be in the normal pillars that they would lean into, that they have to find an eternal place of hope, which is Jesus himself. And so I would ask us to pray this morning that God would raise up these, these harvest hands 
for the work of the kingdom, you and me, as we get about our everyday lives, that we testify to the mystery and the wonder of his grace. Let's pray together. Because Father, indeed in this day, the COVID-19 thing um, has caused community to, to look at and reconsider what is really important, what it is that they put hope in and to find the shallowness and hollowness that's there. Father, we pray for ourselves and we pray for your church that you would raise up the workers for this harvest field. People who, through their workaday worlds, through their everyday engagements, without being uh, in any way super spiritual or religious, but just sharing their lives generously, would testify to this hope that we hold because you shared your life generously with us in the person of Jesus. May we be the harvest hands, hands in this in this harvest that you're gathering in, in the name of Jesus. Amen.